don't know what you want Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall My love, if you feel like I do right now Don't say you're on the run to the other side My love, you say you wanna try But you never do Sugar, there's a reason why we live Man, this is one of those days where I just really don't feel like talking. Well, today I'm on Forest Road 24, north of Cape Creek, Arizona. And I haven't been on this road in well over a year. But when I first came out here looking to find some camping spots, this is actually the road that I came to. Because this goes super deep into the Tonto National Forest. Uh, and there's plenty of camping spots once you get far enough in. So I got a couple marked on my, uh, my GPS, my phone, and I'm going to try and see if any of them are suitable for tonight. I think the coldest it's going to get is like 55 tonight, so this might be one of the last trips I do in a desert. I think the next, uh, next video I do is going to be in a forest somewhere. going to have to ride up north. Well, if you're new to this channel, which I think many of you are, because like after that last camping video, I gained quite a few subscribers. Uh, so this is kind of directed towards you. If you're not aware of what these videos are and what this channel is, I basically ride around saying whatever I want, talking about whatever's on my mind, whether it has to do with motorcycles or not. I'm not doing product reviews. I'm not comparing motorcycles. I'm not even a really a very good motorcycle rider. So if you come here expecting that, you're not going to get it. <laughs> this is a hangout, basically. It's kind of how I look at it. I, I come out here, I say a bunch of stuff I'm thinking about, and we go camping. And then you see the camping portion, you get to see these beautiful places that I'm traveling through. And, and that's kind of what this is. It's like, I, I started doing this because I wanted to try motorcycle camping. I liked making videos and I thought, what if I make videos about that? And like, I give people a way to kind of experience these trips with me. And uh, this is kind of what it's turned into. And I, I think a lot of people like the videos because it feels like they're traveling along with me. And it, my dialogue tends to make them feel like, I don't know, we're hanging out. Because at the end of the day, I'm real. And the stuff that I'm saying is real and I'm not I'm just being honest and I'm saying what I'm thinking. Like, I, I never, I'm not, like, I don't really know how to put it. I don't have that talking head kind of vibe. And I try not to, and, and that's why I don't really want to do reviews. Like, unless somebody wants to give me some dope shit, or do, like, a sponsorship deal, which nobody tends to, no one's ever contacted me for that kind of crap. Nothing that's promising. It's always, like, weird, goofy Chinese people that are trying to, push some weird products <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that if you got some cool products and you want to show them to me stay on your side of the road friend what the f um but yeah so i just this is always it's the way it's always been it's the way it's always going to be and so if you you're going to watch a guy doing wheelies and take jumps and do all the shit that this motorcycle frankly is probably meant to do you're on the wrong channel because <laughs> i'm not going to do any of that I bought the XR because I liked how it looked and uh, found that it was actually way too tall for me. So I had to use a lowering link to lower it and make it um, rideable, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, and it's just been my, my chariot, you know. This is my exploration vehicle. 
that's all this to me that's all that's what this bike is and what it's that's what I'm using it for I'm not racing and you know doing the kind of sh that most guys are probably out here to come do <clears throat> It's kind of like the way I described it um, years ago when I did the I did a video called uh, an owner's review of the XR 650L and I talked about what I think this bike means to me and what I think it's good for. <laughs> Basically, I think this is the Jeep Wrangler of motorcycles. You know, it's not the best on the road. Well, maybe not because Jeep Wranglers are awesome off road. But my point is, it's like it's an adventure vehicle. You know, it's too heavy off road. To be really doing dirt bike shenanigans, um, but it's big enough to do highway speeds on the road, and so that kind of makes it a good all-around machine. If this is the kind of stuff you're looking to do, and so that's kind of what I decided to start doing with it. <laughs> but anyway, thank you to all of you who subscribed. I'm happy that you are interested in seeing more of this. And as a reminder, click the bell icon below the video, and you will be notified when this stuff gets uploaded. My new schedule which I've hardly ever been able to keep a schedule in the past, but my new schedule for this year is going to be once a month. So I'm going to upload one video a month. It's going to be a camping video each time. And uh, if you want to be notified when those go up, you need to click the bell icon below the video. That being said, I have a lot of t-shirts still. Um, lots of larges because I made the mistake of ordering way too many larges, so my bad. I want to order more in other sizes. Um, but right now, the money that I've, I've kind of gained back from the shirt sales is going into the DR650 extended mixture screw. Because I'd like to have those out uh, by the middle of the summer. So I'm currently in the process of developing one of those. And uh, it's going to kind of take up, it's going to take up the funds. So the shirts, if you're, if you're looking for bigger sizes, um, eventually I'll have them, but don't worry but uh, it might take a little longer because some of these larges have to sell. <laughs> so if you have kids or something, buy one for your kids or, you know, uh, but they're dope shirts. I love them. I think they're pretty good quality. That's out of the way. Oh, man. So what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Normally I write down topics in my phone and then whenever, I, you know, I think of something, I think, well, I could talk about that for 10 minutes. And then I put it in my phone and then when I go camping, I do these videos, I think. I look at my phone and I pick a topic. It's one of the reasons why I've been thinking it'd be cool to do dual vlogs and get somebody else involved so I can throw out these ideas and then we can have a, a discussion about whatever it is I'm bringing up and it'll double the length of the vlog. It'd be cool. But I don't ride with anybody because I don't really make friends. <laughs> I, I, I never, that meetup I wanted to do to go to bike night, just, I never did it. I decided, I mean, a lot of guys wanted to go do like a real group ride, and that's not what I was asking people to do. I was asking if they wanted to go hang out, basically. I thought it would be fun to roll in a bike night with like five or six dual sports, but <clears throat> I uh, didn't feel comfortable doing it, and I thought uh, some people probably had the wrong expectations, so we didn't do it. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to do it. But, yeah, that's kind of my, it's my fault, you know. It's like I come out here and I do this shit alone because I don't, I'm not that social. Okay, so this, I crashed here once. Come on, baby, get across. Yeah, there's like moss under that. <laughs> what they've done is they've paved the road there, but the stream trickles over it like a waterfall. And so you end up with like moss and stuff growing underneath it. And that's one of the places where I had like an actual hard crash one time. <sighs> I think my gouge from my foot peg is probably still in the ground. Oh, nice of him to pull over, but we're in the middle of a corner. Thank you. Next time, do that in the straight section. Silly. This is Seven Springs Campground, in case anybody wants to know. You can come here and you can pay money and you can rent a sweet little camp spot by the spring and there's some trees and shit. And it's really easy to get a passenger car in. Well, maybe a passenger car <laughs> that's a good spot to bring your family some picnic benches and stuff pretty sure you have to pay for a permit I've actually never looked into it because I don't do that kind of camping anyway let's get to today's topic uh, I've been thinking about this for a while because like all winter I got back into hiking and I uh, I just kind of got hooked on it 
and I want to talk about that experience of kind of getting addicted to it because I think it's important. I think it's something that in society we we probably forgot about, uh, and that's essentially I'm talking about physical exercise. So I used to go to the gym uh, with my buddies, and we'd hang out, and it was fun because I was hanging out with them. But if they weren't around, the gym was just tedious, and lifting weights was annoying. And I, I honestly, I just I mean, it's fun to see improvement. And once you see improvement, that's motivating. But it just felt like I was going out of my way to do this tedious activity that I didn't want to do. And it was wasting time that I could be using to do, honestly, I had nothing better to be doing. <laughs> but I just didn't want to be there. It wasn't fun to me. Um, and so one of the things that hiking does is it's, uh, it's fun. Because you go out in the wilderness, you're walking, and you're getting exercise, and you're essentially you're getting access to public land that almost nobody else gets to see you know and I say almost nobody else because if you drive down the highway 90% of those people are not in the condition to walk more than three miles at a time period it just isn't so if you go out on a trail and you you go past the three mile mark like anybody you meet out there is a special person you guys are actually involved in a, a pastime that takes effort and training and it's, it's a special experience, you know, to go out there and to see those environments. After a long hike, you come back, and the way that it makes you feel is just astounding to me. Because, like, your head is tired because of all the energy you've exerted. And you drink a lot of water, you use, eat food, and you just you sit down. And, like, sitting down feels spectacular. Uh, you, you forget how good a couch cushion feels when you sit on it every single day of your life. Uh, and you never, you never go out and do any hard work, but if you go out and you walk 10 miles in mountains, over rocks, and then you come home and you sit down, it feels like you've earned it. Like that, honestly, I think that is the only circumstance where I feel truly relaxed, where I feel like I truly have earned any kind of behavior I want. I feel like I could sit on my ass for the rest of the day and I earned it. And uh, that's a sensation that I only get when I've done those kinds of activities and I think that's something a lot of people don't have in their life and I realize a lot of people don't have access to lands where they can do that kind of hiking and that's definitely something that, that makes it more difficult but I think if I moved to a place that didn't have this kind of land access anymore like if I moved back to Illinois I would have to start running or something I would have to go out on bike paths and do something to get that feeling back because that there is nothing in the world that clears my mind quite like that. Because you come home, you sit down, and like nothing matters. Nothing matters. Like any problems that you had that morning are gone. <laughs> because you just did the hardest thing you're going to do that day, and it's over with. So like, it feels, it just feels amazing. And I, I think that's a part of being human that uh, we're missing. A lot of us are missing in our everyday life because we, we work jobs that don't require that type of effort, which I guess I'm done with my main point. This was a kind of a short idea. Like, I need someone else here to discuss it with. But yeah, it's just super rewarding, and it feels super special, especially when you get to go really far out into areas that most people never get to see. This is a spot that I have passed every time I've been on this road, and I've never camped here, but I've always kind of wanted to. It's just too, it's too soon into this ride, I feel, to throw down my tent. But it's a good fire pit. There's plenty of space up here, and f dude, the views, the views up here are astounding. <laughs> you see these mountains in the camera? I don't even, I don't know if you can see this stuff. I love it. <laughs> Maybe I will camp here tonight. I don't know, it just seems early to throw down the tent. But it is 2 o'clock. So, I mean, building a campsite and collecting firewood and all that, it's like, you know, it'll take me two hours. So maybe I will camp here. The more I walk around, the more I want to do it. I'm thinking if I could put the tent like right here, I can have the fire in that direction, I can open up my door and have this. 
And that way, the closed side of the tent is to my back, and then if anyone drives up, I've got a little bit of privacy. The breeze up here is incredible, but it's probably going to wreak havoc on this microphone. So I'm sorry about the audio quality. Oh, I feel so nice though. This is an awesome place to camp. How have I never camped here before? Well, fire pit. Now I just need some uh, some wood. Oh man, I need to get some new riding pants. You can't see it, but there's a huge rip down the butt in these pants, and I look ridiculous. There's like layers to the fabric, so it's not like it actually is going through to my my leg, but it's still pretty dumb. know what kind of plant this is. It is green. The thing about making fires when you're by yourself is that you want them to be small. Some dude just stopped over there. He wants to talk to me. Those guys up there are uh, changing a tire. Went over there without the GoPro to, to ask them, and that's what they're up to. So it's probably the closest I've ever camped to a road. <laughs> Let's finish what I was saying. I'm gonna make these little uh, these personal campfires. This is like the biggest stick that I want. This is gonna make a huge flame and it's probably gonna overtake this little, this little fire pit I've made. Like basically you want just, just, as, as, just as much as you need. Like you don't want any more than absolutely necessary because there's a lot of grass out here and you don't want fire, fire going out and blowing all over the damn place. I want to try to get this set up so that I've got a lot of fire space, but I've also got maximum grilling space from a steak. I don't know what these are, but they're ideal for burning. They're all dry and they're easy to just pull out of here. Like, look at this. It doesn't get any easier than that.
Let me get these pants off. I totally forgot. Whew. Oh. Well, I was gonna go shoot, but I don't wanna go shoot with those dudes standing over there. So I'm gonna chill out here for a little while until they, uh, until they wrap it up. <sighs> well, my buddies with the flat tired left, so I think it's time to go find some place to shoot. I just realized I only brought one magazine. So I'm only gonna shoot five rounds. I actually meant to bring a whole extra magazine to just shoot that one. So the last time I was shooting these skewers and I realized if I just bunched a bunch of them up together, it, uh, it would have made for a bigger target. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do that. And there's a Sprite can. Seems like wherever you go, there's evidence of people. I'm just gonna shoot that Sprite can, actually. Not bad, hit that four out of five times. I'd say that's all right. It's four o'clock, I think I'm gonna read for about an hour and then I'll uh, get this fire going. And we'll start cooking some food. All right, well I got some of these, uh, these titanium tongs by a company called Tokes. That everybody told me to get and they're awesome. I'm so glad I have those. So got some vegetables, some seasoning, some oil. I'm gonna chop this stuff up. I'm gonna put it in my foil. That's gonna go in after the steak is done. Um, and then it's just gonna sit in the coals. So I'm gonna do all that, package that up, then I'm gonna get the steak out, season it. By that point, I'll build that fire up and uh, then we'll get a steak on it. <clears throat>
<sighs> well, I'm going to let that build up and die down a little bit before the steak goes on. In the meantime, I think it's whiskey time. This is this. This is wild turkey, 101 proof. <laughs> I thought about a week ago I'd buy a bottle of this and just go back to like a baseline normal whiskey. I think this is like a normal person's whiskey. You know, not everybody's buying $30 scotch every week. Or God forbid, like $60 scotch every week. But like wild turkey, you can get this stuff for like $15 or $16 if you go to the right place. But... It's uh, kind of fun going back to a, back to something like this and comparing its flavor to the more expensive products that I've been drinking. It's kind of like cigars in a way, where I'd say that like at the end of the day, a cigar always tastes like smoke. You know, it's just a different flavor of smoke. With whiskey, it's like at the end of the day, they all just kind of taste like whiskey, but they're different flavors. They're different flavors within it. And this, I'm not going to tell you I taste any particular flavors, but this is just a good, strong, just a good, strong whiskey. And I don't think it's really the kind of stuff you should be drinking straight normally. <laughs> I think this is the type of stuff you should be probably mixing. Uh, but I like it a lot on ice. Because I feel like as the ice melts, it, it cuts it perfectly, and it's not, you know, it's not totally watered down. It's just, it's not totally watered down. It just kind of makes it drinkable, for lack of a better word. <laughs> I like this thing, but I haven't figured out how I'm going to really use it yet. I, cause it is kind of weird because you're, you're squishing stuff because you're using pointy ends of the utensils to pinch. I don't know. Pretty nifty, though. If you haven't seen this, it's a thing called a... Um, it's by a company called Tokes, and it's a it's a titanium uh, fork and spoon combo that are connected by this orange U-shaped piece of plastic. And when you stick them in here, you have yourself a nice pair of convenient tongs. Pretty nifty. With Amazon Prime, you get it like in a day. <laughs> I don't normally do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pour a little water in here. Just to cut that down a little bit. Drinking whiskey straight's a weird thing because like some people would say it's an acquired taste. I would say it's a taste that you have to get used to. Because to everybody, drinking something like that straight, something this strong is just gonna burn and that's all you're gonna think about. You're not gonna be able to taste anything beyond that. But once you drink straight whiskey for a while and you kind of get used to that burn, you know what to expect from it. And then it just becomes a matter of looking past it and trying to taste whatever is beyond that. And that's where drinking whiskey becomes fun. <laughs> I guess the other thing that would, you, that would be a requirement um, if you want to get into drinking whiskey straight is you have to like getting drunk <laughs> seems kind of obvious but when you drink straight liquor like this it hits you harder and that's always one of the things I liked about it so drinking it you're experiencing it the way whoever put time into making it wants you to experience it and you get to you get to catch a buzz really quick it's actually the reason I started bringing it camping and stuff is because you don't need to bring a case of beer Makes it a little easier. Well, I did not expect to go through this much wood, but I'm trying to keep heat on this thing. I'm not making a big enough fire to really properly cook this over coals. <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of just rotate it and keep it kind of getting singed. I don't mind eating really rare meat. So. There's that. Oh yeah, so I want to talk about infinity bottles. Something I recently came across when I was looking at stuff on uh, Instagram, actually. There's some whiskey guy that I follow on Instagram that mentioned an infinity bottle. So I looked it up. Basically, 
you take the, the last remaining whiskey in a bottle that you have and you pour it into one container. And so the idea is over time, as you buy different whiskeys and you mix them all together, you create your own blend. It's like a whiskey suicide. If you're familiar with a soda fountain suicide, where you go through and you put it, you mix a bunch in together to try to figure out, try to make something new. It's like that. Problem with the tongs, they want to do this. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I'm going to start doing an infinity bottle with, uh, with the whiskeys that I buy. Um, and since I've been drinking scotch for like, I don't know, since November, I'm going to switch to bourbon and I'm going to try different bourbons. And the last remaining liquid in the bottles are all going to go into my infinity bottle and I'll have a bourbon based blend that I've created that's all my own. I think that'd be pretty cool. Since I'm going to be buying like whiskey all the time and doing this, I don't know how much I'm going to add at once, but there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Like you can, you can measure out a certain amount to put into your bottle. You can record like exactly what you're putting in the bottles and everything and, and keep like track of it in a way that could almost be recreated. And so I think I'm going to do that because <clears throat> if I keep track of it, then if you guys wanted to do it, you could recreate my infinity blend. Which may or may not be good, I don't know. But it's going to start with this wild turkey. Um, so that'll be fun. It's pretty rare inside. I think I just should probably go back on. But I'll slice off a piece and I'll try it. We might just eat it like this. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'd say this is pretty rare um, in the middle, but it's it's totally delicious. Mm. I uh, I don't want to go get more firewood, so I'm gonna burn the rest of this and finish these vegetables. Hopefully, that's enough to get those those potatoes soft. I didn't fill this whole thing up. Since that's a stronger whiskey, I only put like a few shots in there. This thing will hold about four shots. Oh man. The lovely sound of vehicles driving past me in the evening. Nah, those guys probably had a good time today. I would say I eat better out here than I do at home, but that's not really true. <laughs> this is a Saturday night meal for me at home. If you think about it, you can go to a restaurant and spend 30 bucks, 30 bucks on a plate of food, or you buy a couple of really nice steaks, and some vegetables, watch a movie at home while you eat it. <laughs> so that's my favorite thing to do. Looks like an oddball mix of vegetables, though. That's okay. I love these bulb onions, man. Oh. These bulb onions are great because they're so, they're just convenient. If I'm going to throw it in my bag and ride out here and eat, like, it's just a nice couple of onions, you know. It's not like if I bought a whole onion. What am I going to do with the rest of it? <laughs> well, that's delicious. Uh... I'm going to eat it, and I'm not going to record me munching on that uh, for the time that it takes me to consume it, <laughs> but <sighs> that's probably the best foil vegetable meal I've made so far. Potato, red bell pepper, and uh, bowl bunion with my own proprietary steak seasoning. When my wife goes out of town, I like to make steak for myself because it's just me, so like, you know. What's the $12 steak? I could go to Jimmy John's and eat, spend $12, and I'll think, you know what? I got a bunch of seasonings in this cabinet. I could mix them together, and I could make a dope steak seasoning. And so that's what I did. <clears throat> and uh, I actually, I liked it enough that I tried to recreate it, and then I wrote down the ingredients, and now I have my own steak seasoning in the house. I have a Tupperware container filled with it. And so every time I come out here, I put that stuff on there. Now, I should point out, 
you don't need to season steak really you just need salt and pepper that's really if the steak is cooked right salt and pepper is probably all you need but i like i like seasoning stuff i, I love the taste of garlic i love i don't know i enjoyed making this one and i uh i put it on everything so <sighs> anyway that's that there's the sunset going down behind that mountain there here's my whiskey in my cup here and i want to wish everybody a happy holiday somebody will be watching this during during the holidays and uh and i need to wish you a merry christmas so merry christmas i've got christmas colors in my vegetables here um i hope you got everything that you asked santa for i'm gonna cut this out if you like this video remember to click that like button if you don't like this video you don't have to click the dislike button if you want to get notified of these videos when they get uploaded in the future go ahead and click that bell icon down there at the bottom of the video and then when it uh when it gets uploaded you can uh, drink with me peace everybody